Hey, what's up? This is Fred Mascherino. I um, have been pretty quiet the last couple years, but I have been out here in the studio um, most days uh, writing my music. Um, I have a bunch of new songs that are finally ready to be heard, and I'm releasing them as The Color Fred. Um, but I also had another idea that I wanted to somehow find a way to bring you guys into this process. Um, maybe even interact with what I'm doing. And um, so right now the idea is um, possibly to do a video series and I was gonna call it In the Shed with Fred. Uh, what is In the Shed with Fred? Well, we're gonna find out together, hopefully. Um, I want it to be something for you guys to kind of maybe get inside my head. Um, my, my idea for it is to obviously play music um, but also tell you the stories behind the music, um, tell you, you know, tour stories from the old days, but also let you know what my future plans are and what I'm doing presently. Um, you know, a variety show of sorts, if you will. Um, you know, sometimes we can talk about my processes of um, how I'm getting sounds or what gear I'm using. You know, it could be anything. I'm going to ask for your feedback of what you want to see, and uh, we'll just see where it takes us. So. Thanks for being here. Welcome, and um, let's go. All right, so Patrick asks, what made you come back to The Color Fred after so long? Okay, so The Color Fred has um, sort of been a name that I, uh, I've i used instead of using my long ass last name, which is 10 letters, Mascherino. Um, yes, like the cherry. Um, so it's sort of like, think of it as my rap name. Um, but I started it way back in the Breaking Pangea days um, before I even joined Taking Back Sunday. I was, um, I was just getting into learning how to record myself and um, I had this a hard disk recorder um, that I that I paid a crap load of money for. That's worth about fifty bucks now, and um, I spent all my time recording these acoustic things. I would lay drums down on it, and it was just something to do when I wasn't doing Breaking Pangea. And I had a bunch of songs. Some of those became songs on the Color Fred full length, like five years later. Um, and then, um, actually after, after the first full length of, um, Color Fred, I went in to do the second Color Fred album. Um, and that was actually what led to Terrible Things. Um, if you notice, uh, the song Terrible Things is on the Color Fred acoustic EP. Um, so I was going in to record that and like Up at Night and Revolution, um, at thinking that they were Color Fred songs. Um, and in the midst of that, uh, I was recording down in Alabama with Jason Elgin and, um, I decided to book an acoustic show while I was down there recording and I went over and played it and, um, just so happened at the club that Andy Jackson was doing sound that night. So him and I were started hanging out all night and he's the most likable guy ever. And he, he was like, I, I let him hear the songs. He was in from the start. He's like, I'm in, brother. And um, and that kind of started, I, we didn't know if it was going to be Color Fred or not. Um, we started looking for drummers um, and uh, eventually wound up with uh, calling Josh Eppard, who had um, not, who was from Coheed and Cambria, obviously. And he, he uh, was just doing weird science at the time, but was looking to play drums again. Um, once we got together, it kind of felt more like a band. So we still used a lot of those songs, but we, you know, put those guys got to put their own twist on it. It kind of turned into terrible things. Um, and then, um, eventually, uh, you know, it, it kind of took its course. Josh got asked to come back to Coheed and, um, I was kind of, I kind of continued terrible things with the EP. That's why I played everything on it. And then, um, and then, um, but I knew that I was eventually heading, you know, down the solo route again. 
So that, that kind of leads us to a few years ago and what I've been doing since. So to answer your question, uh, why am I getting back to the color Fred? Uh, it's kind of like back to me again. Um, you know, I hopefully I've gone beyond the guy with the hard disk recorder, <laughs> but although it's still in the basement, I have to say. Um, but it's just that same process that I had um, where it's, you know, me and my songs, you know, trying to just whittle away and craft them, uh, you know, as carefully as I can. I mean, I, I'm just, uh, you know, sort of over meticulous in the studio with, with, with doing things over and over and over again until they feel right. And, um, and, and that's just something that I get when I'm doing it on my own and I have no distractions and that sort of thing. So it just now is the time that I feel it's the right time to bring back the color Fred and I'm, I'm sort of comfortable in my own skin and I just want to, I want to show everyone now after many years of, of, uh, hermit lifestyle. So that's, that's, that's the deal. Okay. Bruce asks, how do you approach songwriting? How do you maintain your style yet still develop fresh songs? Good question. Um, so I have a couple like rules that I hold myself to when I'm writing that I've mostly learned from other people. Um, in like <clears throat> 1993, I had a, a, a run in with uh, Billy Joe and the rest of Green Day um, where they they played a small bar in Philly and wound up staying at my best friend's house for a week. And one of the things that I remember Billy Joe saying was that, um, it, you know, he talked about songwriting a lot back then, which people didn't really worry about, I feel like. Um, you know, he was saying if you wanted to play good punk songs, listen to the Beatles. And it, the idea was that they knew how to write great songs. It wasn't about the style. That's that if you wrote a great song, it could, um, it could be in any style and still be a great song. Um, so I always, the, the way that I took that was if I wrote a song with my guitar, say acoustic uh, on the edge of my bed, if it sounded good there, it would sound good with the whole band. But if I said to myself, well, the band will make it sound good. It's not that good of a part, but but the band will spruce it up later. Like that that never really worked out for me. Um, occasionally it, it it does, but I I don't like to lean on that. I try to make it sound good ahead of time, and I think by by doing that and having like everything come from like this and and my voice. Um, it's, it's, it's also helped the second part of your question, which is how do I maintain my style? You know, I wrote my first song actually in fifth grade. I would be mortified for you to hear it. Um, I sang my first song for a crowd in seventh grade that I wrote. It was about a girl that I liked at the bus stop. And <laughs> it was also embarrassing, but I kept crafting it. Um, I, I grew up in a town where there wasn't much to do but play your guitar. Um, and um, I uh, I think that, you know, if you, you know, bef you know, I started out with my high school band, which was Stickman, which led to Brody, which led to, t to Breaking Pangea, which led to Taking Back Sunday, which led to Now. Um, and those people that knew Stickman in high school, um, uh, when they heard Taking Back Sunday with me in it, they heard what I did to it um, somehow. Um, I also had have a jazz degree, which doesn't really affect my songwriting, but there's another rule there, which is um, you always had to, every player, Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, John Coltrane, when you hear them play, the second you hear them, you know it's them. And so, um, so when I started out, you know, playing guitar, I wanted to play fast. I wanted to play, I wanted to play everything, you know, perfectly and, 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 and cleanly. And, and that was how you got good was technique. It was the eighties. There was a lot of 
hair metal guitar. Um, but eventually I said, well, I don't want to just play fast and clean. I want to have like a sound to it. So I started like screwing with my sound basically like, you know, you know, just kind of playing a little rougher, maybe not play it perfect every time. Um, that, that created a sound that was uniquely mine. I mean, Miles Davis was probably my favorite jazz musician and I just, you know, he doesn't have the cleanest horn. It's kind of a squeak. And, um, I always just thought, well, that's what I have to do on guitar. And, and, you know, I, I love music so much that I absorb it. Like I, I'm a fan as much as I am a player. So it was, it was always important to me to be like as unique as possible and not to just redo something that was already done before. Um, that causes a few things I've often been told, um, you know, when I come out with new stuff, people say, you know, I didn't get it at first, but it grew on me. I've heard that my entire life. I even heard that with the first Taking Back Sunday record. Um, that's just part of, I, I always put a layer on top of, of maybe like weirdness or like my, my, uh, awkwardness of my personality. And then, but then once you get in there, you say, oh, he did think about this. I, you know, that sort of thing. Um, the, the other, the only other law that I kind of try to stand by is with lyrics. Um, I always want to make sure that I'm actually saying something. Um, I did not always have that, um, that rule. I, in the early days, I, I just sung what I thought would sound cool. Um, I eventually realized that I needed to connect with what I was saying in order to actually feel it. Um, so those are just some of the things that I've done to give myself, you know, that sound. It's not so much intentional. It just comes with the process I feel and, and, and hard work. I, you know, I, I actually would do, you know, bankers hours at one point where I would just get up in the morning and start writing. I had a laptop with lyrics on it. I had my guitar and I would go at it that way. I, and I wrote some of my best stuff when I was really strict like that. Um, so, um, those, you know, hard work, always pays off I found and that's 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 kind of you have to believe that if you're gonna get up in the morning are you know <laughs> all right one of the things that I wanted to do is to bring you guys more into my process and um, how I'm doing these new songs um, and I wanted to show you a, a guitar riff that I wrote that's like a... that's the gist of it um, and if you know my style you know I love pull-offs um, but, uh, there's a big difference between, you know, writing a riff and then making it an actual song, you know, a song with lyrics versus a cool guitar riff are two different things. You have to somehow marry the two. So, um, but I started out with this riff and I'll let you hear a little bit of it with the click here. It's in three, four. <laughs> that so um so uh that's something that i had for a little while um i also had this other part that was kind of times when I have two different riffs um, you know I wrote those completely independently one was gonna be one song one was gonna be the other um, and they were both gonna be amazing songs but I had to like trash the rest of the one song and because I realized when I once I realized that they would be better together um, take, take a listen here I did I did a little mock-up with uh, program drums to start here um, it's in
So I think they work pretty good together. Um, you know, that was just sort of just trying 90 different parts together. That's something that happens, you know, we used to write like 20 songs to get 10 good ones. Um, you know, but the parts of all 20 wound up in songs somewhere usually. So, so that would be an example of that. Now, I've, I'm still having a challenge. I, I, I started to write singing over this part. Um, I'm a little lower there. Over that part, I wrote, um, I have some, some pretty good singing going for now. Also, um, lyrics that I mean a lot to me that I like a lot. But the chorus has been kind of a thorn in my side right now. Um, that, that is, you know, cause eventually you gotta go somewhere, right? So. I, I really like the bass on this song. So I'm realizing I screwed up the video uh, by picking up a guitar that was half a step down the uh, recording's standard tuning. But nevertheless, let's keep going. We're half a step down now. And um, so I have the ver I had the verses worked out at that point. But the challenge has really been um, the, uh, um, the, the chorus has been just sticking me in the side over and over again. And there are certain pitfalls that I tend to hit um, and that I have to get myself out of and the song's not done until I do. And one thing is a lot of times people say, do you write the lyrics first or do you write the music first? They always ask me that. I try to do both at the same time, sort of. Like I get the paper out with the pencil, I have the guitar in my hand and I start writing lyrics. Because I, if I write really good lyrics but they don't work over the music, it ruins it for me. So. Um, so anyway, I, I kind of wrote this, um, never, never knew you were so insensitive, whoa, never, never knew you were so insensitive, whoa, um, the problem is the lyric because I'm not sure how much I like it. And also, it doesn't match with the verses that I wrote. The verses I wrote were, um... It took a bit of insanity To release what's inside of me But don't give up on me you Travel to the ends of the earth Find out what your life is worth Don't give up on me Never, never knew so I'm like, I always have to have a, like a point of view. So I'm, I'm saying don't give up on me. I can't then say that, like call them insensitive. That's a whole different mood. Like that's a different person that I'm singing about. I have to, I have to stay on that track of like, you know, they're kind of giving up on a relationship and I need to keep them in. So that lyric will not work. So I trash that. And to be honest with you, I haven't come up with the right lyric yet. Um, so that's a to be continued topic, but um, but anyway, these are these are the things that I go through on a daily basis. This is kind of the process, you know. The, all this over here, programming the drums, recording the uh, the um, the guitars. That's more of an, an engineering technical aspect that I'm sitting there, you know, nerding out. Um, the, the the songwriting part is a whole different part. Sometimes I have to shut this off, get out the paper and pencil and just like be in that zone. Um, uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a lot of changing gears. Then I have to play the bass, you know, but it, it's a labor of love, obviously. Um, but I, I just wanted you to see some of the challenges that I have going on right now with a song that I actually haven't finished yet. I finished a couple, but this guy is next on the chopping block. So 
So uh, more uh, more later on that, and uh, I can't wait for you to hear that. I can't wait to hear the finished version myself, but I especially can't wait for you guys to hear it. All right, so Abby asks, what's the story behind Empty House? Empty House, if you haven't heard it, is a song on the Color Fred full length. Um, it starts out acoustic and the band comes in eventually. Um, so I wrote this song, um, you know, it's in some ways it's literal. Um, my wife and I were moving out of a house um, before we had kids and we had, we had moved, but we had to stay in the house that night because our stuff was on a truck and it wasn't ready to be delivered at the new house. Um, so we were, we were in our house, but none of our stuff was there. The couches were gone on the bed, the bureaus, the table. And if you've ever moved and, and, and had a chance to have to be in your house empty, it's, it's a really weird feeling because whether you had good times or bad times, like ba good memories, bad memories, I don't know, it kind of makes you think a certain way because you, uh, that house without you in it and without your stuff, what, what is that? You start to think about what, what, what was this all for? What did, like, was the time well spent? Like, did this mean anything? Why was I here? You know, it, if you really, next time you move, if you, if you, you know, being kind of an emotional creature, I just, I have the, I just think about these things. Um, it was really strong feeling this particular time. I think because we had good and bad times in this house. And, uh, and so it, it you know, it wasn't comfortable, you know? And so whenever I have that feeling of like, like, like I feel lost, um, that's just my um, way of, of counseling myself is to write a song about it. And it doesn't fix it immediately, but it tells me that I've dealt with it at least. And that's just how I get through life. Um, so that, so that's, that song, I just remember my wife saying, it feels so weird in here right now. And you, you know, you're looking at things and you're just remembering, oh, I, I did that over there and wow, everything's gone. Like it's, it's, it, it's an empty feeling. So, so that was when I kind of, um, you know, maybe a week later, um, had the, uh, the lyrics here. the floors this empty house compare its content to myself the phone keeps ringing I know they could never help sometimes it's worse to have the time than never have it for yourself I wish I knew you half as much as I can tell. So that was the verse of the song and that sums up a lot of that period of time. Um, you know, because, um, you know, just like bringing up the phone, that house, the phone always rang and it was always just telemarketers constantly. I don't even have a house phone anymore, but that was like my memory of that house was this, this old ring ring all the time. And, you know, uh, it was, it was a, so that was, that was where that came from. I always throw a little bit in from my personal life along with what's going on outside. And, and that, that was that part. Um, the next part of the song, um, why does the road I walk not comfort me? My mind's always racing down some other street. And that that part I wrote later on, and that was actually more about, you know, my time um, when I was thinking about leaving Taking Back Sunday. So that was more on that um, level. So, um, 
so yeah, that's that's that song is actually a really deep one for me. It means a lot, and I'm glad you asked about it. So thanks. <laughs> All right, that's it, guys. Thanks for hanging out in the show with me. We really uh, need and want your input on the on this stuff, so keep in touch. Um, we also need your support right now by doing a couple easy things. Just like, subscribe, and share this video with everybody you know. Um, and of course, check out our new website, thecolorfred.band. Uh, you can get the latest news by signing up for the email list. Um, and until the next one, uh, this is Fred signing off from the shed. See you.